To say this trip has been legendary is an understatement. We've met awesome folks. We've gained more gray hairs and walked with some of the coolest animals that roam this planet. This trip has been far more than racking up miles or driving cool trucks. It's about the lessons we've learned, the pieces we've taken, and the pieces we've left, the experiences we have been through, and the relationships we have developed. And it's not over. Now, we're on the edge of something new, swapping out the usual roads for the wild, shifting sands of Sandwich Harbor. So I brought on our sand dune guru, JP, to take us into this amazing amusement park of sand dunes. JP, we're excited. Same here, guys, same here, same here. All right, guys, we're gonna go. I'm gonna take you to a nice viewpoint. Follow my lead. We have left our trailer back at camp and dropped as much weight as we can to lighten the trucks as much as possible for today's big adventure. Sandwich Harbor might have been named after an English whaling ship, the Sandwich, which worked during the 1780s. It's a dangerous beach to drive, and it needs to be timed perfectly. This is a truly remarkable place to drive. If you're here at the wrong time, the tide comes all the way in here. Obviously, you cannot get anywhere else. It's not like you can drive up the dune and be protected. Uh, the the tide will come in here and wash your truck away. So we're here at the right time for a ne very narrow window. And I think even when we get to the other side, there's not enough time to get back. We'll have to go through the dunes because the tide is going to be coming in. So pretty cool. Yeah. This, this is, is very adventurous and fun. Yeah. Top 10. Top driving 10 driving? Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. X Overland's Africa Expedition is proudly presented by General Tire and the X3 Tire. For whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And season six is brought to you by the X Overland Network, proudly supporting the best stories possible for the Overland community. And by our official apparel provider, Vertex. I decide that this is the perfect time for Cyrus to gain some experience in the dunes. Are you scared? Uh, I'm not too nervous. I think it's just something that will come with experience, I guess. So just got to keep doing it throughout the day and we'll see how it goes. Try not to run out of talent. Yep. <laughs> It'd be pretty hard to do in these trucks, but we'll see. We still got to be careful. So well, the trucks can do it. Yeah. But can the driver? <laughs> I see. Remember, speed is your friend. You need to have a lot of revs, a lot of speed, or as much as possible. Just double check your traction control is off and your four wheel drive system is engaged. Or should I just four put it? Four high. I, I'd start in first. Okay. And then you're going to shift and, and, and maintain it. Okay. I'm basically flat out. Full gas. Okay, here we go. Make sure you're rolling GoPros. Yep, stay in second. On the other side Let's of Sandwich there. Harbor are some seriously yep. intimidating dudes. That's all right, keep going this way. Stay in the power. Stay in the power, go a little left. A little left. Yes, 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 yes. Stay a little left. Stay left, go, stay go, left. Go, power, go, power, go, power, go. power, power. Do not come off. Here we go. You got it. Stay in. Right, 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 right. Yes, there we go. Yes, 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 yes. And we're gonna go here. We're gonna go right, 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 right. Here we go. Power, 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 power. Stay in it. Do not stop. Here you go. Okay, that's your left turn. No, you don't have it. Just manage the power. There you go. You're going left up in there. Okay, we're gonna go straight up it. Hang, hang on that. There we go. Good, good, good. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh. All right, Sequoia, you're up. I had no idea where he went, so I'm just driving everywhere. Next up is the Icelandic guy in the Sequoia. 
All the Arctic snow driving has its relationship with sand driving, and he's about to prove it. Oh, God. He's a guess it, guess it, guess it. Not so far up, not so far up. Holy smoke. Okay, you, get, you just do what you do. <laughs> go, 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 go. He's like, this is so easy for me. This is what I do every day. Ah! Oh boy. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I would love to see Torby's face right now. <laughs> you will see it. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Okay, ready? Yeah. Watch, watch camera. This could get spicy, guys. The good thing is, is Rochelle is actually a very seasoned dune driver. She's competed three times in the Sahara Desert as a driver during the Rally Asia Day Gazelles Rally and three times competitor in the Rebel Rally here in the U.S. She even won the Rebel Rally in a stock Lexus. Where am I going? Yeah, that's oh. going. Dune driving is all about power management and terrain prediction. Get it wrong and you're stuck or airborne. No, 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 stop, stop. You're going to have to reverse. Sorry. I didn't know where we were going either. Stop reversing. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to go either. That's why Torby went full throttle. That's a really good dune driver in there. Mwah, ah, ah, ah. And then she got stuck. Hilarious. Oh, look at them. They're stuck. Shelly got stuck in Walvis Bay. You didn't get stuck. Nope. And I have. Your mom got stuck though. <laughs> I got it and then I uh, gotta run out. Now that we are down a little bit. Okay. Copy that. I don't have a big camera up here, so it's all on you guys. Okay, you sorry, let's put it. You got a seven, yeah, you got the. Yep, just reverse, seven, turn sharp left, and just back up down here. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Slow, slow and steady. A little bit more, a little bit more. All right, now I'm gonna take the probably the easiest line for you, which is gonna be like I mentioned, straight up, and you, you just give gas, girl. <laughs> give gas, girl. Give gas, girl. Got it. All right, I'm up. You can follow. Give gas, girl. Give gas, girl. Go, 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 go. They're back down here. Oh, good, job. Yeah. good job. You can actually just wait the uh, restaurant. Okay. Just as we're about to move, our guide is now stuck. No one is safe out here. Oh, he's stuck. Uh oh. Our guide backing up. Our guide just got stuck. So now it's Max Tracks time. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that'll be great. Thanks. Have you used Max Tracks before? Yeah, never before. You'll love them. Yeah. <laughs> so kick these in as far as you can. Okay. And then when you get on them, when you just slowly, when you when you start to feel like you're getting yeah, on, yeah, 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 on it. Okay, okay. Get all your momentum back. Okay, cool. Okay, low range. There we go, 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 and it would take up to a week to cross from here to the southern end of them. 
The other dunes we have tackled historically are the Altar Dunes in Mexico and the Dunes of Peru. These are substantially larger than any of those we have seen before. All right, here comes Sequoia. These dunes are just a massive playground. Perfect. Just sliding down a dune. Sliding down the dune like I'm on the toboggan. <laughs> Woohoo! All right, you ready to head to the big ones? Yeah, the big ones? <laughs> what do you call this? <laughs> that thing's rad. That's cool. Have yeah. you ever done anything like that? I think it's the biggest sled I ever. The biggest oh, sled I've ever been on yeah. in a dune. That thing is pretty big. I would like to try to go up there on this, Koya. Go up it? Yeah. <laughs> in my, I don't know, it's so loose. I know, it's so loose, yeah. yeah. Like in the morning when yeah. it's fresh no. and it's not hot, I'll bet Sequoia could do that. Could be. I wouldn't be surprised if Torvi comes back here someday to tackle that hill himself. I think this one stuck with him. Thanks to JP knowing the dunes so well, he leads us back to the beach via a very technical route. You want some uh, some action scenes? Sure. Okay, now I'm just trying to plan plan a route here for you, uh, you know, for you guys for you guys to get that. All right, here we go. Okay, go go go! Guess guess guess! Guess it, guess it, guess it. Here you go, it's coming, you got it, Torby. Go, go, go. Woohoo, that was fun. Well done. Your dune driving's really coming along, Shell. Good job. Thank you. <sighs> going out here for Shell. <laughs> it's going good. I always hold my breath when I'm in the dunes, I forget to breathe. That's good, these are big. And uh, the tundra is a is a heavy, heavy girl. So I'm brushing up on some dune skills, and it feels good. But it's still a little scary. After a couple hours of shredding the dunes, it's time to take a break. Yeah. Like these are this is like the biggest dune, and this is bigger than any of the dunes in Glamis. These are big. This one. Okay. I'm awesome. Huh? I'm really glad I'm not finding checkpoints in these. Yeah. It's really fun just to get to drive around. Yeah. And let somebody else sleep. <laughs> yeah. Instead of trying to find routes through the dunes and like one hill at a time. Oh, this is so fun. Oh, super cool. There's a very specific window in time where these dunes are accessible, between the tides. We found ourselves lucky that we were able to experience this amazing place. JP has informed us that our window is closing quickly and the tides are coming in. We need to get back. And what was once a wide, sprawling beach has narrowed down to just a few trucks wide. And it's coming in fast. Seems like the perfect time for a little encouragement, you know, from husband to wife. We were just in here talking, Shelly, and are just so impressed with your skill set growth today and how far you came as a dune driver. The kind of encouragement that'll get you killed. <laughs> <laughs> Have you uh, ever thought about, like, doing some rallies or anything? No, I, I, you know, it's kind of crossed my mind a time or two. It looks like it'd be really fun. Yeah, you should look at doing that sometime. So I just might do that. It'd be really fun. Now that we are in the clear, we can relax and really reflect on the whirlwind of a day. Today is one of the best days of the trip so far. And uh, slowing down for a seal. And that's exactly why. Because we have to slow down for a seal while we're driving on the beach, doing dunes, 
having fun. We got our adrenaline up again for the first time in a while. It just feels good, you know? Fun to put the trucks to the test. Even after they've been through so much already, put the tires to the test after everything they've been through. The suspension, I mean, the whole thing, right? It's just, it's awesome. It was a really, really fun day. Excellent cookie. Oh, I would love a cookie. Mm. Shelly got better at driving dunes. <laughs> gonna murder you. Yeah. I'm gonna be dead. Yep. I'm a dead man. I think what makes this day exceptional is that it had everything again. A great crew, a bit of adventure driving on the beach in the dunes, and everyone involved had a smile, ear to ear. What was that? <laughs> what an amazing day. Huh. It's amazing what this can do. Huh. The last leg, whole leg, just in two-wheel drive. Yeah, just in two-wheel drive. Yeah. Just ripping. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good driving. <laughs> so here is your official certificate to oh. prove to the world that you have done the dunes <laughs> nice. near Sandwich Harbor. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Well done, sir. Thank you, thank you. You are now a honorary member of the club. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Croft, well yes. done to you. Thank you. There is your certificate. Awesome. And Mr. Torpy. Oh, there is one for you too. Well know. done and congratulations. Thank you, thank you and very then much. And then for the whole team. Oh, yeah! Awesome. Awesome. Overland. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys you. are such cool people. Very good. Oh, thank you. Then uh, if anybody, of any one of you guys ever get tired of doing what you do, I've got a job for you. You know All what? Right. You know where to come for a job. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. With an epic day behind us, we make our way back to camp to relax, wash off the dust, and most importantly, the trucks are going to need a full reset before the final leg of our journey begins. All right, what are you working on here today, Tarvi? Once again, the AC condenser. So the idea is to take it to a workshop and see if they can fix it or they have something that we can replace it with. All right, so today is a big day of cleanup. Everything is covered in sand and dirt. I mean, it's been 42 days since these trucks have actually got any sort of good wash. Cyrus Clay and I are gonna head into town and get these trucks cleaned, detailed outside and in, because these guys have got a good travel patina on them now. The ground that we've been driving on recently has been full of salty minerals and everything. It'll be good to give them a good, a good wash up before the last leg of our journey. We're in line for a much needed car wash. These haven't been washed since the United States. So we're very due for a good washing. This should be amazing to watch the transformation of these vehicles. It'll be fun. summer ever closer, we can feel the temps rising every day. It would sure be great to have our AC working with a couple more weeks of travel to go. This is probably our last chance. So we have kind of problem with AC, yes. which is the condenser is leaking and it's in the back. Already taken out for you. Okay. <laughs> Not the good news. I hope the pipes are closed. They are closed. Leaking here and here. Do you have anything to replace? Anything similar? There's not anything similar. You don't get anything similar. You have to replace it with the exact one. The yeah, plan is to leave tomorrow. <laughs> not good news. Yeah, let me make a plan. Yeah, I think any hope we had of actually getting an air conditioning condenser fixed or replaced is turning to about 0% chance. <laughs> so 
So I'm gonna roll these windows back down. Yeah, once again. And that is our opportunity to stay cool right there. And dusty. And dusty. We're looking to stock up for 10 days of food. With Richard away from the group, Rochelle has the opportunity to carry out a covert mission. Richard is turning the big. The problem is he goes to bed last and then he's up before everybody else. So we're gonna have to surprise him in the middle of the day somehow. I need to ask Ashley what his favorite dessert is, but at least they have candles, which is pretty fun. All right, another one done. This is like a Formula One box, 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 box situation. Getting it done. This is the cleanest this truck will be for the rest of the trip. So we're gonna soak it up because tomorrow we're back in the dirt with the windows down, but it does feel good to get a reset on the trucks. We are headed to Uranium Unlimited. Really? Not, that is not where we're heading to. Uh, we are headed to uh, the place where we've been getting our air conditioner looked at, the condenser. They may have been able to fix it. We don't know. We just have to literally show up and find out what happened. Unfortunately, we have no good news for the condenser. Um, because it's the import. So there's nothing we can do about that for you guys. So African style, open the windows. <laughs> so that I can't help, but I've got the other pipes you need. Nice, okay. If only every mechanic was this stoked to help. He's a shining example of the best out there. Yeah, okay. It's not for lack of trying. Not for lack of trying. I've learned a lot through this process. I've learned about fittings. I've learned about how condensers work. At least it's clean in here. Yeah, it's clean. And it's cool right now. We'll just yep. travel at night. That'll be the new this thing. This is the thing you're not supposed to do, but we will do because it's cold. Yeah, perfect. We have another big push coming up. The longest solo section so far. Oh, it feels really good to get everything super full. Because we got some good adventures ahead. With our Icon alloys and grabbers rolling again, it's time to cross a significant milestone as we make our way back towards the country of South Africa. The Tropic of Capricorn is a landmark for our southern descent to Cape Town. Cool. That looks fun. Nice. The patina uh -huh. of this sign is pretty all time. <laughs> all right. Try this. It's fresh. Like that? Yeah. It's fresh. Oh, boop. Tropic of Capricorn is kind of the significant milestone. We went north of the Capricorn mm -hmm. on our first travel day from Johannesburg. So we're making our way south now, and this is the definitive line that says we are now in the southern portion of the expedition. In trips past, we've had northern, you know, like we've gone above the Arctic Circle and things like that. This year we're going south of the Tropic of Capricorn and to reach our goal, so yeah. Cruiser Outfitters? Is there literally a Cruiser Outfitters right there? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yo, Kurt's been here. What? Whoa. You gotta take a picture of that. Kurt, Kurt has, has been us. here. They so that must mean them. there's an E7 sticker here. I thought we beat him. There oh, it is, no. it's right here. Oh, yeah, E7. Huh? Very oh, cool. nice. Awesome. Wow. That's cool. That's amazing. That's 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Really? At least, I think wow. 10 years. That's cool. Well, we should probably put one next to it. <laughs> yeah. It lasts for 10 years on this side. Yeah. 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 Go grab it. You know, one of the great things about this portion of Namibia nice job. is that the roads can handle some speed. And with our trucks fully tuned up, 
we're going to capitalize on that. which I assure you was absolutely reasonable and prudent, has landed us in an amazing camp with an incredible evening ahead, especially as the temps begin to fall. Being in camp, the chores never end. Maybe less dusty stools. Okay, so now we're gonna mount. The jerry can back on the back of the tundra. This should do the trick. And with the bigger projects being handled already, we can finally get into some of the smaller tasks that will continue to help make life better. Always be working on your living situation. Never settle. Back in place. Spot on. It's gone. Broken? We've already replaced one of those. With a little time, Torvi and I continue to tackle problems. Nice connection. Yeah, cool. Nice. That's another win. We'll get that one tightened up and we're back in business. Sweet. A little more sugar, a little more beer. The gals have some time today to take another attempt at beer bread. We're coming into it more confidence this time. Definitely. Yeah, it's gonna be good and all of us are waiting in anticipation. I'm not sure what it is about this place, but it's one of the best campsites for me on this trip so far. It's just got a cool vibe. Does this remind you of a ranch at all, or a spot ranch? I'm excited. Me we are right? now in the machine stage, oh, yeah. where we all just know what to do, oh, and the chores yeah. are rewarding, not troublesome. We have resolved that the obstacle is the way, and I sense that if we didn't have an end plan to our trip, that we could continue on forever. But it is true that most of the trip is in the rearview mirror. There can be an internal conflict of wanting to be home, but also wanting to stay on the trip because everything has finally hit its groove. Oh, way better. Hello. Look yeah. at that. It's an internal conflict that I frankly kind of like. We got a lot done today. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Left town, which is always a feat. <laughs> yeah. Had great coffee. I can see that some of us are starting to reflect a bit on what we've experienced but you have to be careful to not let that take over too soon, as we have a lot of miles to go. I'm not, I'm not bored at all. It's a pretty amazing sunrise. They said it hasn't rained here in 12 years. And this morning, it sprinkled. I don't know what they consider rain, but it did rain. It's up there right now. It's raining. In Africa, in the desert, at sunrise. Pretty magical. <laughs> Sorry, I ran really fast. Okay, uh, so two nights ago, there's a honey badger that killed their dog and uh, one of their tortoises. So they set a trap to catch it and uh, went down there to see. <laughs> and they got it. <laughs> yeah, so it's down there right now. So bring the camera along and go check it out. 
They didn't really put any bait, I guess, so yeah. it's just this metal plate on the in the middle of the trap, and then there's two gates up above, so then he comes in the gate and steps on the metal, and then it drops the both the gates and traps them, so that's how he got caught in there. Dang. I hope that cage is good. I yeah. Too. That thing will tear my leg off. Yeah. Everybody else just left. I've never seen a more aggressive animal. I've never seen. That thing's crazy. The honey badger is famous for its strength and willingness to savagely attack almost any other species, even those much larger like lions and hyenas when it cannot escape. We decide we'd better make some distance before it chews itself out of this trap. Today we are headed to a world famous geographic location at the southern end of the coastal dunes. And along the way, in the middle of nowhere it seems, we have stumbled across a world famous pie house. And after a trip this long, that's exactly what all of us need. You're gonna have good apple pie. Mm. Right there. They look good out there. I'm getting a muffin. Eli can barely contain himself. Apple pie. They're busy back there. Yeah. What could we do? Seven apple pie? We gotta try it. It's real famous, you gotta try it. Yeah. Red Bull's class here for sure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, my love. Not sure. Wow. Dang. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's good. Those flavors. Uh -huh. After eating way too much pie, it's time to fuel up and head on our way. The next stop is Epic. This is Dead Flay, a zone that has been preserved for over a thousand years. There is a phenomenon that happened here. The water was suddenly diverted from here, and the extreme heat quickly petrified the trees that once grew in the water beds. It looks like a fire went through it, but it didn't. Yeah. It's crazy how it stays open. Like this has stayed this way for so long, and it makes you think, yeah. are there a bunch more in the dunes? Are we standing on top right now that are have been swallowed by the dunes growing, you know? Now, the water flows deep underground. There's a stillness, kind of eeriness to it. You wonder what, what used to live here, what's happened over the years. And I think it's easy just to walk around exploring for a long time, just on your own, yes. in your own world. Yes. It's very lonely. It's just, just here, standing through time, very contrasty from flat to dunes that are encroaching in, you can see it happening. Like this is an active place all at the same time. So if you observe and look around, there's a lot happening here. 
It's, it's really cool. We have to be out of this park by 6.30. I don't know what happens if you're not out by 6.30. They just said you have to be across the gate by 6.30. Maybe they fine you, I don't know. So right now, we just came out of Dead Flay and we're on a mission to get to the top of Dune 45. We'll see if we make it. Dune 45 has been on the radar of Peter for weeks. And if we hurry, we will get his shot at climbing the dune. This is a dune I heard of back at the Makoro trip. Um, a guy was showing me on his original iPhone some photos that he took while on a bus tour and it looked amazing. So see what it looks like from the top of this dune that we've waited many weeks to come and see. This is exciting. to beat my older brother Cyrus. <laughs> it's always been like that since we were babies. <laughs> to always beat him. Usually he wins, but not this time. At the fall summit, it's quite a big dune. The elevation you get. When you're walking straight up the crest of a dune, it's pretty incredible. All right, Torfi and I are almost to the top. We're almost there. <laughs> Ryder's almost pretty much up there. What are your thoughts, Ryder? What crazy place, huh? Oh. Uh-huh. What a hike, huh? Eh? Oh, yeah. Fun. Awesome. And the view, it's totally worth it. Made it to the top of Dune 45. It's completion of a, a desire of mine and most of the crews since, I don't know, some people probably knew of this long before I did. I knew in Botswana and that's it. But it's cool. We made it. And on this side we have that. Oh, by the way, I beat you to the top. I no. beat all of you to the top. Okay. Yeah, right, we said. I didn't know we were racing. It's pretty crazy. It's really beautiful up there. <laughs> Would anyone want some June 45 souvenir? <laughs> on me that uh, Namibia is the most vast place I've ever been. And it's taken my, my brain some time to absorb it and figure it out. This place is just huge. So total kilometers today will be approximately 340. We are on main gravel. As we push towards tonight's camp, we find a herd of Hemsbuck, also known as Jim's Buck or Oryx. Anyway, this African antelope minimizes water loss through perspiration by allowing their body temperature to rise to an astonishing 45 degrees Celsius and then dissipate the stored heat at night from their nose. Oh, and uh, they can kill lions. Wow, there's a lot out there. Okay, so I found out that the border is only open on weekdays. So today we're doing well on time. So we're gonna try to push to Luteritz, which is a town on the coast. We were gonna head there tomorrow, but if all goes well, we'll head there today, and that will help with our timing a bit. Go Luteritz speed. We are approaching Luteritz speed. There is some serious history here in Luderitz, an old diamond mine at the end of the line. 
In fact, it's the location for the first x-ray machine in Africa. But it wasn't for medical reasons, but to catch people smuggling diamonds out of town in their, uh, you know what. It was pretty effective. But there's more of that stuff to come. This adventure still has a ways to go. Yeah, and then right there, you'll turn into it. It's case Sequoia, you're coming in. You're gonna probably nose up to me right here. This is our final night in Namibia. Tomorrow, we will have to cross the border before it closes for the weekend. And it's bittersweet. But Man Alive was this place incredible. If you're ever in the area, make sure you spend a good month or so in Namibia. It won't disappoint. And stay tuned for a special final episode of the Africa Expedition. <laughs> <laughs>